who is our God? The knowledge of who is our God will enable us to understand who am I? Who is my God? The knowledge will guide me to understand the purpose of my life on this earth. We read in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 19, the Lord says, Because I live, I want you also to live. We read in the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 38, it is written like this, Now he is God. Now. now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of he the is living. the God of living. Yes. For to him, for to him, all of them are alive. All of them are alive. The way he looks at each one of us are created for living. And he sees us as persons who are called to live. On the one hand, we find God's, God looking at each one of us as persons who are called to live. That's why in John chapter 10 verse 10 he says, I have come that you may have life Life in all its fullness. So the purpose of God for man is that man should have the life of God with all its fullness. That's why God took the clay and breathed into man. He gave his very life he created man in his own goodness. Not only that, he gave his very breath into man. Today you and I are alive because we have the life of God in us. We have the hand. Somebody comes and cuts the hand. Immediately blood comes. The flesh has the tendency to rotten the another, the flesh. But the breath in me heals the wounds. And once again, make me to live. If the breath is no more, the wound that is cut, that will continue to decay, and bring even the worms and the whole body will get destroyed. It is the breath in us, we will fight for it. Breath doesn't allow, spirit of God in us doesn't allow man to die. That's why he says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23, he says, I don't want even a single child of mine to perish. But everyone to know the truth and return back to life. So on the one hand, we see our God as the source of life. On the other hand, we find the same God looking at man who possess his life, who is called to live out his life, is dying, dying due to various reasons, maybe dying to his own circumstances in which he lives, maybe because of his sin, because of his ignorance, whatever may be the reason. When man dies, God doesn't keep quiet. We read in the book of Genesis, 
chapter 3 verse 7 onwards when men sinned against God and they were feeling so ashamed about themselves they don't want to face each other see each other God comes down crying Adam my son where are you without the root you can't live without the branches you look ugly you can't live without your God you can't live without one another life may have its own joys and sufferings but seasons may come and go but the tree may leave all its even leaves but it has to keep alive its roots depend on the roots keep alive its branches very very important for a tree in our life too many things will happen people may curse us suddenly people whom love us may leave us financial struggle may come all that we want to achieve something nothing is working out but we have to be rooted the root will continue to sustain us that's why in Romans 11 18 it is written it is the root that takes care of the tree it is not the tree that takes care of the root yes so the root of our life is God so the Lord comes down when man is dying God comes to save man give salvation to man salvation means get back into life God is life man can move away from life and God comes down again and again in our lives to bring back man to back to himself that is called that process is called the process of salvation the man who has moved away fallen away from God God cannot keep quiet he will bring man back to himself the whole history of salvation is man who is fallen he is drawn back again and again by God if we read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 34 onwards it is written did God ever try to go and take for himself a nation from the midst of another nation God will use seven methods some may look good for us some may not be pleasing to us but he will use seven methods whereby he will draw man back to himself what are the methods he says by trials suddenly he will allow us to go into the trials we will suddenly our eyes will be tied up we don't know where, it, where we are going trial of finance trial of maybe misunderstanding in the home various type of trials that is the moment we get stopped otherwise we go on run 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 we don't know where we are running praise the Lord praise the Lord one man had a horse it seems so God said if you say hallelujah your hearts will run and if we say amen it will stop so uh, he was running 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 and the horse was going on the top top suddenly he realized that the horse is going to fall he said amen the horse got stopped and then he said hallelujah it went deep we should know where to start and we should know where to stop we should handle our lives 
we cannot allow our emotions our situations our trials and all around the world to lead our lives deep down we are the temple of the holy spirit and with the help of god we have to learn to lead our lives we have to join with the god of salvation and give salvation to all of us that's why in the book of jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 it is written don't go on run 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 if you don't want accident in your life you have to do three things what is that stop look around and then proceed ah uh, <coughs> national highway is our uh, it is made for me what is that let everybody stop if you just cross what will happen without seeing the vehicle that come on the road may finish you off you got to stop every day you got to look into your life you got to look into all around what god is doing in your life what god is saying to you why does god allow these things in your life my dear friends sangamam plus tv is god's gift for you for our times like comment share and subscribe god will do wonders in your life praise the lord